Hey y'all, welcome back. It's MJ here at Just Plain Fun. We're going to do another unboxing video because these are a lot of fun and I know some of y'all enjoy them. So you can see there's four packages down there. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. And now with lighting that one of my wonderful silent sponsors was kind enough to donate to, uh, to the channel to make things better. So this first one is a medium flat rate box. And this one was actually one I think I did. It was either a trade that I did, which I don't do terribly often unless it's something I have multiples of. Or I bought it. Honestly, I don't remember. But I do remember that it is incomplete. And I bought it mostly to have the parts. Or, you know, sometimes when I get these, if I do have the parts handy, and especially if I have a lot of them, I will go ahead and make it complete and sell it as a complete unit. But if I'm not mistaken, I think there's somebody who needs a part from this. And so that may have been why I bought it incomplete because I've already got a potential buyer or trade lined up from somebody who needs it. Or it could be way off and it might not even be what I think it is, but we're about to find out. So definitely looks like some type of either rabbit plane or dado plane or tongue and groove type plane so i love those sound effects that's the real sound of bubble wrap my kids absolutely love to pop bubble wrap which i think is normal among all kids or just about all of them of course this thing is going to make me look silly but nothing that my Stanley number 199 can't handle. There we go. Okay, so that's what I thought. Yeah, this is either a 48 or a 49. And of course, it's Japaned, as you can see. Do y'all say Japaned or Japaned or how do y'all pronounce that? If you look really close, you can see that uh, there's a... You can't hardly see that, but there's a patent date on it, which is another indicator that this is a relatively early one before Stanley started putting nickel plating on things instead. And I don't think I realized when I traded or, or for this or bought it that it was necessarily an early one because the guy that's looking for this part right here is not looking for one that's Japaned. So that's not gonna work, but we will drive on anyway. And we will call that good. You see how I was using that knife and pointing away from myself? That's good safety. Because I did manage to stab myself in the hand with a screwdriver the other day trying to get a stuck screw out. And if anybody's wondering, don't do that. It's very painful. So that is actually one of those little blade screws or that holds the blade in place. And those are, those can be hard to come by sometimes. I'm not gonna take up all of y'all's time because I know time is precious. But I am going to go ahead and open this knob. Let's see what kind of condition it's in. So worth mentioning this knob on this older 48 or 49. I think it's a 48. It's actually beaded. But this knob will also work on your 46, your 47 if you happen to come across one. Your 48, your 49. As well as your older 45s well it'll work yeah the, the 45s that had the knob on the the main body itself so a little compatibility trick there for you just in case and in a pinch you could put this on a number two but it wouldn't be right so there she is in all of her glory and as you can see it's missing the irons or the blades whatever you, however you refer to them which is very common if you've watched my other videos you've heard me talk about uh what are referred to on in most industries as consumables, which the blades are, they get sharpened at over time or used up rather, uh, the more times they get sharpened. So, um, and also in my other videos, I've mentioned that you can steal irons from a number 45 or 55 and put them on there and use it. So really, if you own this tool and a 45, or better yet, this tool and a 45 and 55, you can probably get away with just moving the irons back and forth if you don't mind doing that. You might have to pick up a second one to have two identical irons, but you get the idea. But yeah, so older, early 48. And this particular package I uh, got from a gentleman up in Maryland. 
And if you follow me on Facebook, you've already seen this. For those of you that are not on Facebook or don't follow me on Facebook, uh, what we're doing is we're trying to get some of these aftermarket parts, uh, aftermarket reproduction parts out into the tool community. So that way, one, you don't have to pay full price for these parts because they can be prohibitively expensive for the real ones. And also you can get your tool, you know, get your, your in this case, router plane back working. And so I wanna shout out to Spencer Johnson cause he's the one that made these or, you know, turned these for me, made them on his, his metal lathe. And I know this is another one that Mike Muscat is also has been, you know, we've been talking about making them, but as you can see, this is the rod portion of the additional attachment. I believe the correct nomenclature is additional attachment for your router plane. And so I don't have the feet, although I have another gentleman that I've been talking to about trying to do some, some 3d printing of the foot that goes on there, but this will function as a depth stop or will function, you know, in the same method, the same manner. It just doesn't have the full foot on there to fully close the mouth. But again, aftermarket reproduction and much cheaper than buying an original one. As a matter of fact, these are retailing from just plain fun for $16 plus shipping. And here, so that you can see the full effect of what it looks like installed. Of course, this is the original. And naturally, it's going to look older. It's going to look vintage. It's going to have all that patina on it. But, you know, if you have a newer one, or especially if you just want to get the thing usable and you want to have that part to, you know, help with whatever application you're using your router plane for, that thing will, will drop down. For that matter, you could even pick this up and then you could just create a, like a wooden block or something and just drill a hole in it and attach it to the bottom of that. You know, lots of options out there. So there you have it. Let me know if, uh, if that's something that you need. And just as a side note, because, you know, I can do my own advertising because it's my YouTube channel. Uh, I do have this one original vintage additional attachment that is available for sale. And I am at $55 plus shipping on this. I frequently see them sell on eBay. Maybe not frequently, but I do see them sell. And I have sold them on eBay for in the $65 to $75 range because uh, router planes are just nuts. And they have been for a couple of years. So if that's something that you're interested in. 55 plus shipping on that, you know, possible discount available if you're buying some other stuff. This next one is pretty special. I hope Bob Page doesn't mind me plugging him here on my YouTube channel. I highly doubt that he does, although I didn't ask him about it ahead of time before I filmed this. So, Bob, if you're watching, I hope you don't mind. So, I was at a, an estate sale a couple weeks ago, about maybe three weeks ago or so. And I bought, actually, you know what? It wasn't even a state sale. It was an estate, but it was an auction. It was an estate auction. And I ended up spending, you know, whatever, a couple hundred bucks like we typically do when we go to that kind of thing. And the estate was of a, or belonged to a retired shipwright. And if you're, I'm sure you're mostly, most of y'all are familiar with that, you know, people who build boats, obviously. And so ended up buying a few lots and did really well. Uh, if you follow me on the, the Can I Have It auction site, you know that I sold uh, one of the, the FIDs there and ended up selling the other FID. It was much larger uh, to the same gentleman. Um, so long story short, in one of the lots was this saw right here. And I ended up sending it up to Bob and I was undecided whether I was going to keep it or if I was going to have him, you know, sell it or, you know, send it back to me and I would sell, it, you know, whatever the case and I ended up deciding to keep it because I don't have a saw exactly like this. And if I can figure out how to do it, I'm going to send y'all, I'm going to show some pictures during the video of what it looked like when I got it. And then this is what it looks like now. And if you've never had Bob Page do a saw up for you, it's, it's pretty awesome. It'll let you know, you know, of course, how he sets it up and then what the rake angle and fleam and all that stuff is, if you happen to know that. Which, if I'm being honest, I don't. Um, but I just like saws, like a lot of us. Not as much as I like planes. So, 
13 points per inch, I'm pretty sure is the old uh, PPI. But this is an English made saw and he had to replace the split nuts on it because the ones that were on there were pretty jacked. But the handle was in really nice condition and as you can see, it still is. And this is a Ribbitson, I believe, out of Sheffield. And so a nice old saw, I believe that I believe that's a gents saw, if I'm not mistaken, if I have my my name correctly. But just a really nice job. So Bob, again, if you're watching, thank you for hooking this up for me. And if anybody out there needs some work done, you want to get whether you need a new plate or you need your plate flattened, straightened, whatever. Uh, you need a spine repaired, replaced, and of course the the hardware on your saw or even your handle, you know, repaired or replaced. There's a lot of really good saw makers out there, and I'm happy to see that community growing. But Bob Page is uh, he's been around a long time, and he's really good at what he does. It might be a stretch to say that I saved the best for last because that saw is pretty spectacular. It's even better than what I envisioned. And I'm pretty happy to have it, pretty happy to add it to my saw collection. But this one right here was a Facebook Marketplace find. And so it's always a crapshoot because you try and coach people through the shipping. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So as you can see, lots of open space here. Do not do that when you ship. Make sure that you fill up all the space in the box. And if you're taking advantage of whether it's regional shipping or just shipping within your region, even if it's not a regional box, Obviously you want to use a lightweight packing material. So use your styrofoam peanuts or your air pillows or bubble wrap or whatever the case, you don't want to use newspaper unless it's a flat rate box, but I can't stress it enough. You don't want this. If you're shipping, please make sure that you fill in all the space and then tape the bejeebies out of the outside of your box, which this person didn't do. But again, Facebook marketplace find. And so there's only so much you can do. I can tell already that it looks like this one was a success story. And when you put this many layers of padding around it, you know, you're probably going to be okay. <clears throat> but as a best practice, you want to fill in all that space. And if you've ever received a plane from me or really anything, you know that I disassemble as much as possible and pack parts individually. But this one is a, it's a nice one. It's a, it's a special one. And as you can see from this angle, it just looks like a regular five and a quarter and the handle has been taped repaired. So Ryan Powell, if you're watching or Will Walker or Gordon, y'all might be getting this handle at some point in the future. But if you watched, I think it was my last video or maybe two videos ago, you know that the five and a quarter C is relatively uncommon. So just a little, whatever peer into or peek into the world of a flipper for those of you that maybe have less experience than others. I know there's probably quite a few of you out there because I sell parts to y'all all the time, but I paid the asking price on this particular plane. Sometimes if something's severely undervalued, I will pay more because I want people to feel like, you know, they're getting what something is worth, especially if they were to go back and look at it, you know, look it up later, or they might even see your item for sale later and then think oh well that person ripped me off so but i did i i paid their asking price which i thought was fair and the reason for it was because there were too many question marks about this and of course you know i'm gonna have to replace this tote in order to sell this plane and then you know it's not uncommon to have question marks about you know how flat is the blade and things like that so based on what i paid which i'm not going to disclose but I gave him what I felt like was a fair price for it. And I'm happy to report that it looks like everything except for that tote is actually in pretty doggone good shape. So it doesn't look like I'm going to have to replace anything else. And then the mouth, which I asked for a good picture of, I didn't really get the ideal picture that I wanted, but it doesn't look like that is cracked. I mean, you got a little scratch there, but it looks pretty good to me. And it's overall pretty clean, which I'm also pretty happy about. So if a five and a quarter C is something that you're in the market for, make sure if it's still the weekend of, you know, at the end of August, I don't even know what date is, what is it, August 28th or something like that. If it's still that weekend when you're viewing this, this is probably gonna be on the Can I Have It auction site. 
with a nice clean tote on it and up for for auction so and even the lever cap which is always something that you have to wonder about if you don't have really good pictures is is your lever cap chipped and then naturally you want to find out about the back of the iron i just got one of those really cool screwdrivers that's designed for this but i did not prepare for this so you get to watch me do that with the old dewalt and somebody sent me some lee nielsen screwdrivers which i thought was pretty awesome but unfortunately they're daggone too big to do most of the work on the vintage stanley planes so i don't know if y'all have any experience with this i don't know why i'm getting off track like this but the dang point on that is too large and for the most part it won't actually engage on the old vintage planes i guess it works on the lee nielsen's Anyway, I don't know where that came from, but a five and a quarter C is going to be up for auction if that's something that you're interested in. And if you're watching this, you know, many, many moons later, then this thing's already made its way to its new home. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. You guys are awesome. And thanks for helping me build the channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to share this video and the other videos, especially if you see a question out there on Facebook and somebody's asking about, say, like a Type 11 or something, throw the link up from a Type 11 video. You know, let's help grow the channel. And most of all, thanks for watching.